what I'm doing here is using my Mac 3 software with the, the controller board which is set up for my CNC machine or the CNC milling machine and I want to test the X and Y stepper motors on the Epson chassis to see that things are working okay and that I could control it quite well from the Mac 3 software. Now all I'm going to be doing um, initially is to go into diagnostics. When you first load up Mac 3 you'll come to the program run screen which is the first tab on the left hand side. What we need to do is to go to the diagnostic screen and if we look at the bottom we have a button there which is marked servo frequency generator. By clicking on that what we can actually do is we can let's move this to center we can test any one of the three outputs on the three axis card x y or z as this is a vinyl cutter or a printer plotter whichever way you want to look at it we only have two axes which is the x and the y now the x on the vinyl cutter is the horizontal movement of the head unit so if we select X there, we can now select a step frequency. Um, I wouldn't try going too high initially with this. Um, on the small CNC mill, I can go as high as 10,000. But we want to keep it fairly low. So I want to do tests which are around about 500 hertz. Nice and slow. It won't strain anything and we can see what is actually happening. Now the next box is reversal period. What this actually sets is if we have um, a step speed of 500 Hertz we can actually step the motor one way for two seconds say then it will stop and reverse for two more seconds so effectively what your motor is doing on the x-axis is actually moving 1000 steps to the left and then 1000 steps to the right after a two second pause and this will carry on doing this until you actually stop this particular program so if we enter in here two seconds and then click start You can hear in the background the x-axis stepper motor running. We will go to that in a minute and I will show you the actual results from the um, server frequency generator box. Now if we stop that and if we increase that to say, let's say a thousand. So that is a thousand hertz or a thousand steps per second and we are running for two seconds so now the the head will move um, a total of 2,000 steps to the left and then 2,000 steps to the right then go back again each time after a two second pause so if we run it now you can hear a different pitch to the motor, it's not very happy on earlier tests I did notice that on the slower speed it did vibrate a little bit but I've not altered any of these settings because I wanted to leave these settings initially the same for the CNC milling machine. So let's change that to 2000 steps and see what happens then. Two thousand steps. A little bit noisier still. So if we stop that, and let's change that to five thousand steps, and we'll run that. She seems a lot quieter and a lot happier at 5,000 steps than at 2,000 and 1,000. 
I think this is just setting up parameters. The initial noise that you heard when I started this on 5,000 steps was that the carriage actually hit the end stop and the motor was jumping because it couldn't move any further. So if we stop this, it's not really happy at slow speed. Now we'll try the Y axis which is the, the roller or the platen. After having investigated the problem, which was traced down to idiot factor, or I've forgotten to plug in the motor. So we're now running at 500 hertz on the Y axis and the platen is now going forwards and backwards. This motor is a lot smaller than the carriage motor and it doesn't seem to vibrate as badly at 500 hertz. In fact, it doesn't vibrate at all. So again, let's increase that to 1000 hertz. probably here in the background it's now changing at 1000 Hertz or a thousand steps per second so we'll stop that and change it let's, let's get the mouse in the right place we'll change that now to 2000 Hertz or 2000 steps now this motor seems to be unhappy at the higher speeds. It's not vibrating or anything, it's just making a noise. So we'll stop that and again we'll try that at 5000 Hz like we did with the bigger motor. Now that is happy apart from the squealing which is a bit of motor resonance, I think. So if we change the 5000 to say 4800, let's see if that squealing occurs again. It's more prominent at 4,800, so we'll change that to 5,500. I've yet to look into this, it possibly could be mechanical, I'm not too sure. Let's increase that to 8,000. Yes, I think it's mechanical, I don't think it's actually the motor. Although this motor in one direction seems to be uh, vibrating a little bit at this speed. So that is how you test out your X and your Y from Mac 1 in the diagnostics. Now, if we go back to the program run panel, we should be able to, using the the up, down, left and right arrow keys actually control the motor manually. So, yep, the platen is rotating forwards and backwards. And now the x-axis. Hit the end stop. One motor doesn't seem very happy at the slower speeds, which is the larger carriage motor, and the other motor doesn't seem to be very happy at the very higher speeds, which is the actual platen or the roller motor. But we'll have a look and see what is happening whilst we actually run it. Here we're doing the same test again using the um, diagnostics and servo 
frequency generated box. I'm running this currently at uh, 1400 pulses per second on the Y axis which is the uh, carriage um, pattern itself. Um, all I'm doing is a two second step forwards and then backwards so at 1400 steps for two seconds the mulch is actually moving 2800 steps before it changes direction Right, we're back in the main control panel now for Mac 1 and we can now regain the control of the X and Y using the up and down cursor keys. This isn't quite what they had in mind when they said I needed a pen holder, but I'll try anything once. Um, I've just downloaded one of the uh, Mac 3 files called Roadrunner and I'm holding a pencil where the printhead used to go. Um, somehow I think it's going to move too fast for me, so I don't think we'll get many results out of this one, but I'll give it a go. Nope. 